Introvert in Business, a podcast by me, John Baker, that will help you activate your introvert, unlocking the introvert superpowers within your business, so that you can more confidently sell and network, that you can unleash more creativity and improve your business performance, so that you get a better business. Today's podcast explores managing change from the perspective of a leader who has introverts and extroverts in their team. And I'm with Adrienne Gibson. Adrienne has been working with senior leaders in more than 100 countries around the world for the last 20 years. And her business is the heart of transformation. And just before we start, if you want to get in touch to go into any of the subjects covered in more detail, please feel free. My details are on the podcast and equally if you'd like me to speak at your conference or work with your team to help improve productivity, creativity, profitability within your firm, I'd love to speak to you. Adrienne, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm working as a speaker, facilitator, consultant, and coach, um, specializing in the heart of transformation. And what that is, is connecting to the hearts and minds of people to change their behaviors and perspectives. The fact that you've got 20 years experience working with leaders, senior leaders around the world, um, puts a really interesting perspective on that, that whole thing. Before we get into it, I've got to ask, and I ask this of all my guests, How do you identify? Uh, As an extrovert, and I would say a a very, very strong extrovert, uh, usually on the top end of the scale. Thank you. My belief is that we all, in all teams, in all businesses, need both introverts, extroverts, and everything in between. And I'm going to hope that you think the same. Otherwise, we're going to end up having a fight. (laughs) I absolutely agree. So no fight needed. From your professional perspective, how do we have to think about introducing and driving change when we've got introverts and extroverts in the business? And I'm I'm going to guess when I say that, that we're looking at it from the perspective of a leader, but that leader could be an introvert or an extrovert because I've found, and I've heard lots of people say that the only good leaders are extroverts. I think that's hogwash, but again. It's not, it's not true. It's just the line. It's just not true. And there's this huge misconception about what it means to be an introvert or an extrovert anyway. Uh, And people sometimes misjudge what they think is, is extroversion is actually an introvert who's playing a particular role they have to play at work. Right. So it's not about whether or not someone's social or antisocial or chatty or not chatty. It's simply down to where the person gets their energy. Do they get their energy from within themselves and having some time on their own? Or do they get their energy from around other people? And the way that they actually show up in business could be very misleading one way or the other, because believe it or not, an extrovert can be quiet and an introvert certainly can command a stage and, and have a big persona. But I, I guess the thing with, with driving change is you know, you've got however big your team is, whether it's a couple of hundred, whether it's 10, five, you're going to have a mixture of people. Correct. And you've got to take them all with you. Yeah. Whether, whether you are an introvert, it's no good just taking on other people like you. or Whether you're an extrovert, it's no good just appealing to the, the louder people um, <laughs> and annoying all the quiet ones. So yeah. what's the, what are the secrets? How have we got to do this? Yeah, I think for me that every team is a blend of very different people. So there are no two people who are going to be the same in the way they think or process information or engage or speak up or etc. Everyone is going to be different. So the first lesson is for the leader to recognize just because I, as a leader, have a preferred way of engaging or interacting or whatever doesn't mean that is the way. It means it's my preferred way. And so the first lesson I think that's the most critical for a leader is to recognize that everyone is different and it's to respect the differences and embrace them as opposed to trying to change them. You don't get the most out of, for example, an introvert by just putting them on the spot and forcing them to speak all the time. It's how do you engage them in a way that lets them um, be them best, their best selves at work and play to their strengths as opposed to trying to force them to behave in a way that is 
uncomfortable or very draining for them and that kind of thing. Um, how, how would you go about doing that as a leader? How do you play to somebody's strengths? For me, it is about understanding the kinds of differences in the way that people prefer to show up. It's getting to know the people in the team and what drives them. Uh, and like I said at the start, you can't look at folks and observe their behavior and make make 100% accurate assumptions about are they an introvert or an extrovert or anything else for that matter. It's about getting to know them at a personal level what makes them tick, what drives them, what are their preferred ways of working, communicating, etc. And once you get a better understanding about, of that, the next step in my mind is to be able to alter your style to appeal to a variety of preferences. So if I have one natural dominant style and every leader has typically a, a natural dominant style that they can um, exhibit, it doesn't mean that you have to always exhibit that one natural dominant style. It, the, being a good leader, in my view, is being able to adapt your style and modify adjusting your behavior to fit to the circumstance or the people that you're engaging with at that time. Different situations call for different leadership and different people in the team call for different leadership. And it is about being able to adjust your ways of working, the way that you speak to people, the way that you communicate to appeal to different types. So for example, if you had someone in the team that maybe was on the extreme end uh, of introversion or extroversion, doesn't really matter one way or the other, it's about noticing those differences and being able to adjust behavior to kind of bring that back towards the middle. So if I give you an example, you know, I don't want to mislabel things to say introverts are quiet. That's not accurate, right? But let's say you have someone who is more quiet in the team, more reserved, and doesn't feel as comfortable speaking out in a group setting or a team meeting or something. How do you make sure that you're actually getting that person's input and not assuming that they have nothing to contribute? They just may not feel comfortable engaging in that particular environment, particularly if there are people who are very dominant in expressing themselves and will want to often have their opinions heard to the point of dominating everybody else in the team. Somebody who's less comfortable with that will um, often end up not voicing their opinion, but it's not because they don't have one. It's because the setting that was created isn't conducive for them to feel comfortable to speak up. So how are you making sure that you're drawing those perspectives into the decision making and not making assumptions that they have nothing to offer? So is it, do you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them? Do you invite them in the meeting? Maybe, maybe ask the person who's dominating with their viewpoints to, to hold their views and encourage others in the room to offer their perspectives as well. I mean, that's one small adaptation to when you're leading a conversation in a team, how you can make sure that all the voices are heard and not just the ones that are the loudest or are the most dominant. And that's certainly something I, I see quite often. So, so obviously it's going to be very important to be able to, as you put it just there, to hold back some of the dominant voices in a, in a group and encourage some of the other ones to speak. Is there a good way of doing that that works or doesn't upset other people? Yeah, I mean, doing it with respect and kindness. And also, I think one of the things that a good leader would do is to set expectations from the start. If you've, if you've been behaving with a team in one way for, for a period of time, then suddenly you want to change that. I, I always advise leaders, give a fair warning of whatever kind of uh, change you're about to implement with the team so that they know what to expect. Because suddenly, if you start managing the team meetings very differently, it can put people off a bit and make them feel uncomfortable, like they've done something wrong, but they don't really know what it is so if, if a team leader says you know what I'd like to make sure in this meeting that we're hearing from everyone around the table so before the meeting concludes I'm going to make sure that we've saved enough time to hear from every voice around the table rather than just a few people so for those of you who are really eager to contribute your your feedback I welcome it but if I if I need to cut you off at some time please expect that I'm just do or respect that I'm just doing that so that I can make time for every voice in the room. Just setting the expectations up front at the start of a meeting so that people know they're going to be cut off and the ones that don't necessarily feel comfortable speaking up know that they're going to be expected to speak up so they can be thinking through the way that they want to share their information. And that's okay. important. Like an introvert, it's not that they don't want to speak up. It's that they're processing things internally. 
So as an extra, as an extrovert, I process as I speak. I think and speak at the same time, which isn't always good. And my clarity of thought comes as I'm talking. For an introvert, they're typically more quiet only because they're processing the information in their own minds and then articulating it. But if someone else is speaking all the time, they never get the chance to articulate what they were processing in their minds. So by giving that sort of expectation at the start of a meeting, the introverts are like, right, I know I need to process this and there will come an opportunity where I'm going to be called on to share it which they can certainly do, and they will have gone through that internal processing so that they're ready for it when they get called on to, to share. Brilliant. No, love it. So very much then what you're saying is about making sure all of the people in the team or the business can use their strengths. One size does not fit all. Right. Um, that might be sometimes about managing some of the more dominant people to allow the uh, quieter ones to speak through. It might be sometimes about managing some of the more detail conscious people to allow the, the people that think on their feet. I like yeah. that and talk, talk as they think. Very much important around setting expectations uh, so that people know that they, A, they're going to get a chance to speak, but also they'll be expected to speak, which yeah. is cool. Um, that makes a whole load of sense. I kind of got one quick question that goes with it. In 100 countries around the world, I'm listening to you and you're, and you're talking. And I'm going, that makes such a good piece of sense. Where does it all go wrong? Is it that people, leaders, don't bother with all this stuff? Is it that leaders don't understand it? Or is it they just can't adapt their styles? Where, where's it going wrong? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. I think some leaders just, I'm going to say it like this, don't know what they don't know right? And so some don't recognize the fact that everybody is different and it's more beneficial to the, the business and the team to have a group of diverse people, different ways of thinking and behaving and creativity versus, you know, logic and all this kind of stuff because it creates more innovation for the team. So some leaders naturally default to trying to build teams that are like them because it's easier to manage. You know, if I have a team of five people who think on their feet and act just like me, it is so much easier because we speed through things because everybody's kind of thinking and behaving in a similar way. But while it may be faster, it's not actually the best outcome for the business. So a business is better served by having a diverse group with different perspectives because you get more thorough and better problem solving and innovation and things like that. So some of it is education of the leader about the value of having a really diverse team and, and creating inclusive environments. So one, I think that's part of it. Two, I think having people recognize that speed of decision making and acting comes at a cost as well, because it, it prevents a lot of times the inclusion of a lot of different perspectives, because the ones that speak up the most are the ones who get their viewpoints heard. And there are a lot of very wise and valuable viewpoints that aren't being drawn in. So some of that, I think, is a skill of a leader that they may or may not have. And then you, you said something when you mentioned about 100 countries. There are some cultural contexts with this as well, that in some cultures, you know people are more reserved and don't speak up as well so there's there's that lens to think through beyond just the introversion extroversion as well but the other thing I would say is you know like you you mentioned at the, at the start about driving change and that being my specialty you know a lot of times what will happen is leaders will have a meeting they'll talk about a change that needs to happen in the business they'll ask for input right then and there Anybody have any feedback? Anybody have any questions? And there's a mistake that's often made that silence is agreement. What goes wrong, don't assume silence is agreement. It's make sure that you're checking that assumption, that you're asking people in different forums. Everyone is not going to feel comfortable speaking up in a big group, period. Today we've been very much talking about as a leader, how do you drive change? Sometimes these podcasts look at it from the other perspective, i.e. from the perspective of an introvert in a team or in a business. What advice would you give to an introvert that perhaps is in a team where change is being rushed around them, but they're not getting heard or they're, they're being ignored? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same base principle, recognizing that there are differences and people behave differently. So, you know, an introvert with someone like me who thinks and talks at the same time, you know, I, I think by talking, it, it might be really annoying for an introvert and who may think, why does she always have to be talking so much? Well, she's talking so much because she's thinking. That's how she's processing information. So it's exactly the same. It have to modify our behavior sometimes to be able to make sure our message gets across. Oh, so that. an introvert has to speak up sometimes. And if they're finding it difficult, it's about why is it, understanding why is it that they find it difficult. And if there's a particular problem in the team, like somebody who's being too dominant and they don't feel like they get a word in edgewise, then either having a conversation with that person or with their manager to say, you know, can you help create space for me to, to be able to speak up? Okay. But it is also about making sure that we all have to operate outside our natural tendencies and comfort zone to make sure that we're either understood or that we're getting our points across. Adrian. If some of the people listening wanted to get back in touch with you to perhaps get some more information about what you do or get you to help them, what would they have to do? Uh, feel free to visit my website. It's adriangibson.com or email me. I'm at adrian at adriangibson.com. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, John. 